in China, the the virus uh, crisis came uh, preceded the U.S. by several months. So the universities, as well as uh, uh, high schools, uh, they all were instructed to be prepared to deliver courses online uh, from day one. If I understand it, the, the preparation starts at the beginning of uh, February, so they have one month's time to uh, actually get themselves organized. It is obviously a humongous uh, effort, and um, the lesson learned are really uh, something that uh, we in U.S. can benefit. So for that, obviously, I want to thank Fudan University for providing uh, the resources and the personnel to to share your experience with us. And I think it, uh, in particular, we're certainly very honored to have Professor Xu Lei, who is also Vice President of, uh, uh, of the university. I don't think I need to introduce to you uh, how good, how renowned uh, Fudan University is. Uh, and, but in any case, uh, let me uh, just say a few words about our speaker. He graduated uh, from Fudan and uh, stayed, uh, got his PhD, uh, basically in physics, uh, particularly optics and the lasers, the semiconductors, devices, and uh, very active, known as a, in fact, uh, uh, as a very outstanding researcher. Uh, and then uh, before he was appointed as a director for academic affairs, uh, and then later on from there, he became uh, the vice president in charge of education, education reform uh, at the university, I think since uh, what, uh, 2018, am I correct? Uh, yes. So his talk today is, uh, to compare the various effective teaching methods, uh, not only uh, uh, is uh, uh, consider being delivered, being considered, and being practiced in at Fudan, but also at Tsinghua and Beida. So, uh, the format of uh, of this talk uh, is this: We'll ask Professor Xu to give us a uh, up to thirty minutes. Uh, presentation, and then we will have the remaining 30 minutes uh, uh, in a Q&A session. And as you may have heard earlier, our organizer was telling us, you can actually sign on, uh, sign on and, uh, uh, and then it will show up whose turn to ask questions. Uh, but if, in case that doesn't work, you can just, whoever come first, uh, uh, I will recognize uh, you and you can uh, start to ask questions. Uh, so without further ado, let me now turn it over uh, to Professor Xu and, uh, and ask him to share with us. So please help me to welcome Professor Xu. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, David. And also, uh, first let me share my uh, video. my screen okay can you can you see that this is yeah. my screen yes okay. very well. so i just put it uh, on the full screen and thanks uh, uh david and also uh thanks uh the c100 for organizing this uh, meeting so that i can share with you guys uh, some of our experience working on this online and teaching and the learning in this uh, emergency period uh, I use the word massive because this is uh, actually the first time in history that uh, all university courses are offered online. So this is very special. And uh, as uh, David said that he doesn't need to, to, to say anything about our university, but I just give some numbers, okay? So uh, we have, like, we are Fudan at, at Shanghai. So we established in 1905. And we have like uh, 33 schools in covers all science, engineering, humanity, social science. And we have a very strong medical school. And uh, uh, we, right now we have undergraduate students about uh, uh, 13,000. And we have much more, many more graduate students about uh, uh, 
like uh, 24,000 over. And we have a total teaching faculty over 200, uh, 20, 2700. So this semester, we need to offer regularly, we should offer courses, uh, classes around, for undergraduate, we, around uh, 3,400, about that. And we have also graduate classes around 1,600. So this is a huge numbers of classes that we need to offer regularly. And uh, so when all these are going online, and this is, a, I call it, a, we encounter an emergency a case because uh, first, this is a, uh, an unknown epidemic. So this is quite different from uh, the SARS because we have experience with working with SARS, but when SARS just broke out, it's in mid of March. So all students, the semester has begun. So all students are, were on campus. So we just need to, uh, the, the, the worst case is we just lock down the campus and all the classes can go as, uh, as usual. But now it's not the same case. And uh, we don't have no, we, have, we don't have experience working on massive online teaching and learning. So this is a, a testing of the ability of our faculties and uh, uh, testing of our online infrastructure and also testing on the administration management and also it's on how students will feel about that. But still we have some confidence because uh, uh, right now we have at least five years of experience developing MOOCs, the massive open online open courses and we have the experience on flipped and blended classes and we have a number of experts that is uh, very good at online classes. And this is our confidence. And also our confidence comes from, uh, we have a strong administration. So this is very special because uh, in China, the university ad administration is the decision maker and also the service provider. So we are very strong on our side. And, but still we, at the, at the very beginning, as uh, David said that at the beginning of February, there is some debates on we have different opinions. So shall we start online teaching right now or we just delay until all the students back to school? So we just waste uh, maybe several weeks. So this is a very, uh, uh, two just uh, opinions from two sides. And uh, I think uh, uh, because uh, uh, remember that at the beginning of February, so it's uh, on this curve or it's uh, the determined the patients so I just pointed here. So this is uh, at the beginning of February. So comparing with uh, the, the fast increasing numbers of patients at this point, so we, we, we actually don't know what will happen. And we, we have the uh, experience with SARS and you compare with SARS, you see that it lasts like about half a year. So as uh, uh, at, the, at the beginning of the February, we just uh, don't know about how will it will happen for this uh, new virus, coronavirus. But we also see that maybe this is a good opportunity for us to, to change the teaching and learning methodology. Because uh, this is also a special in China. If we divided uh, the, uh, uh, the standard, uh, uh, the teaching class as five stages from the silent class all the way to a debating class, so I think uh, right now in China, most of the classes are offered in this two stage. It's a silent class or it's just uh, questions and answers. And uh, if we compare, so there is a, okay. So, and then I just cut it short. So I just give you uh, one com comment from an inter international reviewer who uh, uh, evaluating, he was invited to evaluating the undergraduate education of a top university in China in 2016. What he said is, I found silent classes even in the best university of China. So this is maybe this uh, coronavirus, uh, this uh, broke out, uh, provide opportunity that uh, the, the teaching style or the teaching, the learn teaching learning methodology can uh, have a little change. So this is uh, what we want to, uh, 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 to do. So here's the, the timeline. So we start from the, the Wuhan city broke down, that is the January 23rd, and all the way to 
to February the 24th. So February the 24th is the, the original, uh, the semester will begin. So we have, as David said, we have all together one month to prepare. But uh, uh, we decided to start planning of the online teaching uh, as early as uh, like uh, the February the 2nd. So, and then we uh, just uh, use uh, like about 10, day, 10 days to, to prepare the plan. And on February the, the, the 12th, we have the official announcement that we all, that all the, the classes should be transferred to online. And, and then at the same time, we started the first round of the faculty training. And uh, on the February the 15th, we have the second round of faculty training. So it's amazing that within 10 days, we just finished all together the two rounds of, uh, we trained about 3,100 people. So that's finished. So, and then uh, at the beginning of the original opening day of the semester, that is uh, February the 24th, we have the first class start with the uh, two experts uh, showing, uh, uh, presenting, preventing and protection of epidemic. And uh, uh, just one week later, that is uh, the March the 2nd, all the online classes start. That covers like 80% of all the classes, uh, which is uh, the total number is 4,000 classes, including graduate and undergraduate students. And uh, over 2,000 professors are involved and 40,000 students are learning online. So this is the timeline. And this is the timeline that uh, we uh, just use it to convince the professors that why we should go to online education and uh, how it will happen in the later days. So what I what want to show here is that uh, uh, this, this, this timeline is just prepared like at the beginning of February. So right now we are I just uh, in this position. So we are expecting that students will come back to school in one month. And, but they will not come back at the same time. They, just, they will come gradually because uh, the campus cannot uh, just uh, absorb all the students at the same time. So it takes uh, some, maybe one or two weeks for that. So you can see that, and then the, the, the campus will return to regular teaching at uh, this period. So you can see that uh, there must be a period that the online teaching and regular teaching has uh, the period that uh, the two teaching method will overlap. So the online teaching will last for some time, for more time. So this is the timeline. And also uh, we hope that uh, the, uh, so uh, this is, this is uh, for the graduate thesis. So we don't want to, uh, uh, to postpone the graduation of, uh, of the students for, to further. So we, we hope that the, the professors can start guiding their, uh, their students at the beginning when the original, at the original open day. So, and this is the timeline. And then we just, we just tell the professors how to prepare their online teaching. So we have four guidelines. The first guideline is uh, the courses should contain a complete online process. What's the meaning of a complete uh, this online process. So uh, uh, we just provided as the, the three steps. The first step is uh, uh, the professors should provide videos three days before the class for the students to self-learning, self-directed learning. And during the class, they should do a Q and A and uh, interactions and uh, uh, discussions. And after class, they should assign they, they should do the assignment for the, to the students. So this is the first guideline. The second guideline is, is uh, we encourage the professors to find existing online courses. Uh, that will save them a lot of time. And the third one is we don't recommend live lessons. Live lessons means that uh, the professors uh, uh, don't need to prepare their records. They just go to, at a scheduled time, they just go to class and uh, uh, talk to students. Uh, why we don't recommend uh, uh, live lessons, I will show you later. And the fourth one is there is still like 20% of courses that is not suitable for online. So we just uh, should do the re 
to, to rearrange these courses. So the pr first priority for the professor is to finding existing online courses. So the good news is uh, uh, all the country in, the, in China, we have altogether 37 uh, public platforms. They have all together over 25,000 online courses existing. And the, the government asked all these uh, 37 platforms to open all these courses free in this semester. So the, the professors and the students can just select these uh, courses and uh, this is their, we, we, we just encourage the professor, this is their first priority. And the second priority is that, the, and then if they cannot find these online courses, they can find other suitable teaching, uh, existing teaching videos. And uh, if they cannot find the existing uh, course, online courses, they have to make them by themselves. So, and here shows that how to, we just tell the professors how to prepare their uh, uh, course videos and uploaded it to some public uh, the platforms. And here I just combine why we prefer a recorded lessons instead of a live lessons. Because uh, uh, we made the decision at the beginning of February. So remember that in China, we have over 2000 universities. So maybe there are around 40 or 50 million students going online at the same time. So we are very, very worried about what will be the network uh, influences. So this is an unsure problem. And also we don't want that the, the, the professor just go to online classes doing traditional talking classes, as I said before. So this is, we, we just take this as a chance that they may, they may have some changes. And because at the regular class, it's inevitably that the professors will use some time of the, I call it irrelevant time. So one class is 45 minutes. They cannot use all these 45 minutes discussing about the useful information. But it's a really for live lessons is easier job for professors and students. Uh, on the other hand, the, uh, for the recorded uh, courses, videos, lessons, and uh, there are many, many advantages but the, the, the shortage is uh, the professors need much more time to prepare for the, for the, for the lessons. So I think I just escaped this too. Uh, and uh, this is our university. And also I, uh, I can show you some examples from other universities. There are two, the most important university in China. One is uh, Tsinghua University. Tsinghua University has uh, uh, had done a very good job preparing for the online education. They call it the, the RAIN classroom. So there is a company working uh, and organizing this, uh, uh, all these online sources. So this is a whole program of the online. It's uh, uh, including the cloud-based library, online courses, big data anal an analysis, and in the class they have the interaction, self-study, and working uh, and doing experiments. So this is a whole uh, this uh, uh, online education system is it's working very good. And on the, ba on the, uh, the other the, another university is a Beijing University, Peking University, it's called the Beida, and also very, uh, the most, uh, one of the most important university. So what they did is uh, s uh, more or less uh, similar to our Fudan University. So you can see that they provide very strong support for both faculties and the students. Uh, they have the training for teachers, and the work a meeting for teachers and also for students. And uh, uh, they are set, uh, they are growing, uh, they are training TA, and uh, also they have uh, the, the letters for the students and for the teachers. All this uh, strong support can uh, 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 tell the faculty and students how to do online teaching and education. So I just give some examples of our, of our own university at full time. So here is a one example that when we take the, the course of math, you know, the math needs a lot of this derivation. So online courses is uh, really not very suitable for math courses. So what this professor did is uh, he just use, still use a blackboard on campus in the classroom and then just uh, recorded the video. But this is not a real, uh, not a regular this uh, 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 class. 
he just uh, remember he just really just designed the derivation process to cut it short, concise, and precise within 20 minutes. So usually a uh, one class is 45 minutes. So this uh, he just prepare one uh, this video around 20 minutes, and then he just use the class time, the scheduled time for class, and divide it as a learning group, emphasize on key points and answer questions. And that's very efficient and very effective. So this is one example. And the second example is uh, there's one professor who has three online courses in this, in this semester. So actually, I, I feel very sorry for this uh, professor because this is a really a, a huge uh, workload. But, and uh, what the three courses include, one is a required classes uh, with a large number of students. And the second is a required course with a small number of students. And the third one is a selective course for a small number of students. He just uh, used three uh, methods. For the, for the first type, uh, this is a large scale, that's 80, 80 people. I just divided people to uh, several groups. One group has uh, six people in the class time, just have a very strong and uh, uh, vigorous uh, discussion. And for the, for the small size of required course, it's just uh, based on the problem-based learning and emphasizing on the analysis. And for the selective course, uh, I think this is for the graduate course, and he just uh, asks students to a lot of reading. So this is uh, intensive reading. So he just uh, uh, arrange all these uh, three online courses very effectively. And uh, there's some, another, uh, some other examples, like we have, uh, as I said, we have a very strong, uh, this uh, uh, medical school, and we have a lot of doctors uh, go to Wuhan, went to Wuhan and supporting the Wuhan. So, but still at Wuhan, they do the online teaching. And also we have like uh, altogether 39 uh, international, uh, these teachers, they are working online globally. And here is uh, just show two uh, slides. One is the facility on the faculty side. You can see that the faculty use a very professional uh, recording facilities to prepare for, for, the, for the video. And uh, uh, interestingly, uh, one professor just uh, used this legal uh, to, to prepare a stand for the cell phone. And uh, it's very interesting. And this is on the facility on the student side. You can see that the students has used, the students are good. They have a lot of these facilities computers and notebooks and uh, pads and cell phones and they have they have the alarms and and also uh, various kinds of notes to 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 assist them in in learning and as i said that uh, we we hope that this is uh, not this is on the crisis but this is also a challenge and it's also an a good opportunity to promote the, the learning teaching and learning methods so uh, we are happy to see that uh, here is uh, two short conclusions. One is uh, we happy to see that a large number of professors get familiar to this new teaching method. And you can see that uh, uh, almost all professors know how to prepare and use all these kind of new techniques, online techniques. And also we are very happy to see that the concept of learning kin-centered education has been popularized because we uh, spend many, many efforts try to convince the professors that learning-centered education, or it's called active learning, should be adopted in their, in their teaching. But the, 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 you know, the professors just has their own tracks, uh, teaching tracks. They don't want to change their track uh, very easily. But this provides this uh, uh, on massive learn teaching, online learning, teaching and learning, uh, this program just offered a very good opportunity. So you can see that uh, over half of the professors think online teaching may help in better training of self-learning. And a very large number of faculties accept this online teaching methods. So finally, I just give a, a, a very short summary and uh, some tips. Uh, I think that right now at this point, we are at the beginning of uh, uh, the April. So the online teaching has uh, lasted for a uh, total uh, have, a, have, a, have a whole month. And we are very happy that uh, uh, what we, the feedback we get is uh, the, 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 the outcome of this online teaching and learning, the results is uh, much better than we expected. So what our experiences is, uh, uh, I think is the following. 
One is uh, we need very good this uh, coordinative organization because this is uh, the whole university should work as a one machine. So the academic affairs office, the internet infrastructure service office, standard affairs office, faculty development center, all these uh, departments should work together to offer this uh, online teaching and learning, this program. And also this, both the professors and the students should have a very clear plan for this online teaching. And the professors should view, and the students should view the recorded lessons and other materials before the class. Then the professors should organize very good in their uh, class time uh, for explain the key points and organize discussion, Q&A, and also prepare for the homework and the feedback. And also we found that uh, we need, still need very much effort to enhance the in-class interaction. Because you can see that a survey from Tsinghua University, what they said is after one month, the full attendance rate just dropped from 70% to like 60%. And the total discussion times drops from uh, like uh, uh, 500, uh, uh, this number I just uh, dropped almost half of, the, of the, the interaction times. That means that if the, uh, it, we, we cannot, the professor cannot organize the in-class interaction very good and the students just go away. And also uh, we need to find and reply or respond to new emerged problems on time. Like there is a lot of uh, emerge, new emerged problems like online access problems and a large pressure from both faculties and the students. So you can see that the 70% the of students feel more pressure than the regular class. And also over 70% of faculty reported that uh, they need more time in preparing for the, for the teaching. And what we responded is uh, we provide weekly tips and suggestions to the professors and they recommend good examples for them to organize uh, uh, this uh, uh, online teaching program. And we also found that for this total online classes, we need more TA. So we just added uh, uh, more than 10% of TA positions to assist the professors, especially these professors from uh, humanities and social sciences. Uh, they don't know how to, to organize these online classes. So more TA is uh, needed on their side. And also we found that there is a new emerging problems like, uh, uh, like online IP. So, and how to protect this online, uh, the IP of online teaching materials, both like Tsinghua University and our university has uh, uh, some, uh, uh, do some things to, 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 to prevent, to, to uh, protecting the copyrights uh, of these uh, online teaching materials. And also there's a large pro problem of the textbooks because uh, uh, when the students are on campus, they can just borrow the books from library or they can just order the books very uh, easily. But at, at this period, it's very hard to find all kinds of textbooks. But, um, uh, but fortunately, uh, this is also the, the advantage of China, the government. The government just uh, arranged that, uh, asked all the major published companies to provide free access, online access to textbooks. So that solved a large problem. And uh, also we are, uh, because uh, the online classes has uh, lasted for one month and it's time for the mid exam time. So how to uh, prepare this online exam, this is also a good challenge. So I think uh, uh, Tsinghua, has, uh, Tsinghua University has a good uh, this experience. Uh, so they just uh, provide this uh, honor uh, code to the students and they have uh, more the subjective items, uh, open questions to evaluate the student analysis and summary ability. And uh, so these are very good uh, examples. And finally, I just uh, compare this online and the offline, this uh, teaching and learning process. So you can see that uh, the advantage of online, uh, this education is uh, the, the professor can prepare very concise and satisfactory teaching materials for better learning. They just uh, think a lot and design, uh, has a very good design and provide these uh, teaching materials. And it's a good way to promote the teaching and learning methodology. 
so the professors can just con concentrate more on learning outcome, not on teaching, but on learning outcome, and know more detail about how learning is carried out. And the student can have a flexible learning process. And uh, very interestingly, uh, this may be the, the uh, uh, we, we did not just recognize it uh, earlier because uh, you can see that the students are more likely to participate in the online discussion because this is maybe some uh, uh, Asian people, they are very shy. When face to face, they are very uh, reluctantly to open their mouth and ask questions and join the discussion. But behind the computer, they just find that uh, the students are very uh, more easily to participate in the, in the discussion. M many uh, professors just uh, uh, reported that uh, they found the, the, in the class, the discussion is um, much more rigorous than they expected. But still can see that uh, uh, the online uh, education cannot uh, replace the offline because the offline has the advantages that the, the professor can uh, timely adjust their teaching according to the feedback, I'm sorry, according to the, the feedback of, uh, from the students. And in the class, face to face, they can have very high, much higher quality discussion and they can form very good teamwork. And most important, I think, our education is to educate people. Educate, it's a human being educate education. So what we need is a warm educating because we are human beings. And we need a learning environment. The learning environment should be formed on campus by both students and the professors. When the students are just at home looking at a computer, uh, I don't think this is, a, if all the courses are offered online for, for their classes, it's not good for, their, for, the, for the real education. And of course, this is a, a, a serious problem for, for like in China, just a, it's a, a offline, it's a good way to avoiding the, the plagiarism. So, and uh, they're still debating on online and offline. And right now we have one month lasting and the, the faculties and, uh, and the students are still debating on. Some say that I want to keep this online style, but others say that let's go back to classroom as soon as possible. So this is, uh, uh, I want to share with you some of our experience and I thank you very much for your listening. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Professor Xu. And uh, before we start uh, asking uh, the audience to uh, ask their questions, I noticed there are seven questions uh, lined up, so we'll see uh, whether we have time. But before we, uh, let me take the prerogative uh, as the moderator and ask you a couple of questions myself. Uh, I, the first question I have is whether you see, once you go back to uh, the regular campus, uh, do you see this online effort somehow can continue or the university has any incentive uh, plan to encourage people to go online or what would be, what is your projection looking forward when the students are back to on campus? Uh, yes, uh, I think David, uh, I think, uh, at least a part of the professors will continue using their online materials later on. And uh, they, will use, they, they know that uh, the strong or vigorous discussion in class is more effective for the student to, to learn. So I think uh, this is a good chance that they, they realize that uh, they cannot just uh, use all the time in the classroom, just talk and talk and talk. They just they should leave some time for the students for the discussion, and this is a good experience for I think it's for majority of the faculties, but I, I, at least part of the faculties will still use this method. So I, I'm I'm very optimistic about that. Very good because, like you said, uh, students uh, not just uh, Asians but students in general general are more likely to be actively participating in question and answers uh, in an online uh, platform than in a classroom. In a classroom, like you said, many students, particularly engineering students, are not very used to asking uh, questions and challenging the professors. So in many ways, uh, the online uh, instruction and learning 
is really very much in sync with the concept of active learning if one mm -hmm. finds the right way to do it. Uh, do you agree? Yes, I agree, yes. Yeah, okay. Well, let me not occupy too much time. I know we now have nine questions out there. The first qu question, do you, do you lower the academic standard to lower the stress of the students? Yeah, this is a uh, yeah, this is a very good question and very interesting question. So, as I said, that uh, our ex at the beginning, our expectation is low. So we think that so we thought that inevitably the quality of online teaching will be lower. But actually, actually, the professors found that uh, oh, it's good. They just prepare the materials before the class and have strong discussion. And this discussion has never happened in the real regular class. So, and at this stage, I think it's much better than I expected. But we still need to see because only, we have only one month. And uh, after like uh, midterm or after the students go back to the school, and then we can uh, just compare and to see how this uh, online education really uh, the, the result, what, what is the outcome of the, the real results? Well, you're talking about students uh, in terms of attention span and whatnot. Uh, yeah. This, uh, this uh, person who posed this question about lowering standard also mentioned that uh, he or she posed the free dance class to encourage the students <laughs> to dance before they, like, how, how balance their lives during the, New York yeah. City lockdown. Yeah. I can see some logics right. uh, behind that. Right. So right. Somehow right. Uh, a good teacher will figure out a way how to entice uh, yeah. uh, the students. The second question is, what is the long-term impact uh, of this pandemic on education, especially international education? Do you think online education will continue to flourish in the post-pandemic area? pandemic uh, area era yeah i i think uh uh for the for the long term i think uh, uh okay uh, let, let me see this uh we don't we don't want we don't expect that uh, uh this online uh education this style will vanish after epidemic so after all the students go back to school and uh, what, what we all the faculties has did and all the students have did just, uh, just disappeared. No, I think they will have a long and strong influence on further education. And also this is, uh, I think this offers uh, an opportunity because like uh, in the MOOCs, M-O-O-C, MOOCs just started from United States, I think 10 years ago, something more or less 10 years ago. And gradually, I, I, as I know that uh, even in the U.S., the MOOCs are not has has not achieved their expected uh, the results. And maybe this uh, and MOOCs also needs to change their style. And uh, I think maybe this is a good chance. The epidemic provide a chance for the MOOCs to to go back again, but they need to to change their style. It's not totally online still it's online plus offline and this is a good i i i, I do believe that this is uh, the trends of the education yeah one thing you have not really take advantage of in my mind is the asynchronous learning uh rather okay. it seems to, seems to me the class delivery in the way you describe it is still very synchronous uh, okay uh, so in that sense uh this uh, this uh person asking a question is uh, particularly thinking about international education in what way the online education could impact uh, sort of uh, learning across the border when it was a different time zone. So okay. do you have any plan to go into sort of a, 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 a asynchronous type of format? Um, okay, uh, uh, David, let, let, me, let me answer like this. So the uh, we right now we have uh, the uh, uh, as I said we have thirty nine professors globally, and uh, they just offered online courses to our students. 
Well, they just give the courses uh, in different times, but uh, they need they need to on the, in the class time. In the class time, they just need to find the time that uh, all students can uh, online. But the materials that uh, the teaching materials that they can provide, so before the class and the students all over the world can first read and watch the videos and read the materials, and there is no uh, time difference. They just use their own time to do, do that. And, but they, they need to have uh, and, uh, uh, a time that they can collect and uh, have the same time they just join together for the in-class discussion. And this is, uh, I think this is, this, is, this is the way that we can do. If, 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 all, if the class has to do live lessons, well, I, uh, I'm a little, this is not the way that I like it very much. I see. I see. Now, the next one also is an excellent question. He said, well, if you have over 100 students uh, in a class like that, how do you control the Q&A time so that people can have plenty of uh, interactions? Okay, this is a good question. So we, uh, uh, this, in this case, we need more TA. So one, the, usually the uh, professors would divide the students like we have the largest class we have David is about 200 okay. and the professor can can handle the discussion very well they just divide the, he just uh, divided the, the class to like 10 groups uh -huh. and then they have uh, uh, several TA it's a one TA to organize one group right and uh, very interestingly so this professor has uh, some experience. And he, he first, in his first class, he just uh, divided the students to 10 groups. And then the next class, he just uh, used the Zoom to collect all these 200 people, the students in the same room. And still he, ha he, he can handle it. Oh, he has a whole way. That's amazing. And then he asked the students, do you prefer to divide groups, or we just join together. Yeah, I and see. And the students said, okay, we like to join together. <laughs> no, I mean, this reminded me that uh, uh, when we teach physics uh, class for uh, the beginning physics, in US, we typically have a very large lecture room, several mm -hmm. hundred students, but then yeah. we have uh, small recitation classes with TAs, where mm -hmm. you have small group uh, to interact with each other with the TAs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is probably is uh, similar, even though one is online, one is in person. Still, mm -hmm. you, you're trying to maximize the interactions with the students uh, that way. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Okay, the next one I'm not actually sh understand I, is from someone I know. Uh, I uh, I guess sh her question is. Uh, do you think there is still a need for faculty to hold some kind of live discussions, uh, uh, discussion hours for students? Uh, or you think a synchronous kind of uh, delivery could serve that purpose? W which one you think is better? Uh, I don't know whether I interpret her uh, question correctly, but uh, Ming Yan, if you can. Uh, uh, turn on the microphone. Maybe you can explain it my, uh, yourself. Vian, are you there? Thank you, David. Uh, and thank you, Professor Xu. So, um, what David has interpreted is um, pretty much what I want to ask. I just want to know whether we need to um, have some kind of live discussion session to make up for some concern or some maybe quote unquote drawbacks we have towards the online call. Okay, so yes, the, uh, uh, maybe this is my, uh, I just didn't, uh, I did not explain uh, very clearly. So we asked the, the professors to prepare their recorded teaching materials. And the students just uh, watch these videos before the class time. And still they have, uh, uh, we, because we have the schedule, the time for, for all these classes as a, because if there is no this epidemic, the, the time schedule for all the classes has uh, been settled. So at the settled time, the professor just uh, 
have this and the students just uh, uh, stay online and the professors can uh, interrupt can can uh, can just uh, discuss uh, describe uh, describe uh, more on these key points of his uh, uh, teaching materials and also the students can ask questions after they read after they watched the video and uh, if they don't understand they just can raise questions and uh, if the students say okay we all understand what what is what is the, the teaching material said and then the the professors can uh, just uh, raise some questions or just uh, can organize some discussions and to to check if the students really understand what what is the, the teaching is so okay did i did i answer your question yeah thank you i got it okay uh okay then the next question is can you provide some details uh about exams uh, exam methods uh when you have a uh, online course i think that's a very practical question you mentioned about the page plagiarism uh and, and this certainly uh is that related how do you is there any particular uh way that you want to design your exam in such a way that uh, for online online course that you may minimize that kind of uh, uh problems okay so let, let me go back to uh, i want to share my uh view graph okay Oops. Well, what? No, the 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 view graphs is not uh, okay. Uh, okay, so this is uh, this is what uh, the uh, Tsinghua University they did. So first, uh, they provide this uh, owner code. And uh, they ask a student to check that uh, I will not do the pragmatism. Uh, this is uh, the, their promise. And then what they did is uh, they just provide uh, subjective items like, uh, uh, so I'm a physicist, I'm a physicist. So as uh, David know that we have some uh, problems that uh, to solve the, the problems uh, are like uh, using equations and uh, a step by step. But this step by step, uh, they can just, uh, sometimes they can just find it from other uh, open materials but what we want what but the, the professor can ask a student just write down their what what were their thoughts what they are the ideas of solving the problems they just write down some some uh, sentences and these sentences cannot be copied from online uh, this is their the student's own opinion uh, own their own thinking ways how to solve the problem and this is just check if the students uh, understand what the problem is and what's their solving way. So this is a one way. And uh, for the social sciences and humanities, a lot of the, the usually a lot of the, the problems are the concept description. But the concept description, they can just, the students can easily find it online from public uh, resources. And now this, the professors can ask the students within like one hour to write down a short essay. And from this short essay, and the student that uh, the professor can check if the student has a really deep understanding or not. So these are the two ways that uh, uh, the exams can, can, can offer. Yes. Uh, I guess one problem is how do you know is the same person? <laughs> Assuming. Yeah, this is uh, okay. So there is a uh, uh, some some uh, I know that some uh, professors, but I will not recommend it. I, at first, I will say, some professors just ask students to turn on their video, okay, and uh, I see. ask students to sit before the vid before the computer and don't move. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I, I don't like this. <laughs> I, I should say that. <laughs> okay, one last question. Uh, the question is that uh, something like this. We use Blackboard, Google Meet, Zoom, and WeBex uh, to deliver online. 
So in that sense, there, there are already tools available that you can divide the classes into subgroups. So why can the class be run as live online lecture, but still engage the class effectively at the same time by dividing into small groups? Do, uh, do you get the feedback from students, their thoughts on the effectiveness of online, just focus on Q&A? Now, I'm not sure exactly uh, who is Jan, J-I-A-N. Could you speak up? Maybe you can explain a little better. Jan, are you there? No, okay, nobody <laughs> answered the call, but, but basically it, the point is that it is possible even in a way delivering online that you can divide the, the classes into subgroups uh, 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 while at the same time, uh, not just a separate time dividing the subgroup. Is that a tool you available to you or whether you have tried that kind of things? I uh, actually, David, I don't understand quite well the question. So you mean the, the, to, to divide to several groups at the same time? Yeah, I, that's what, uh, because uh, apparently and, there- okay. And then we need, uh, we need uh, several of these uh, TA or professors working together, right? At the same time. Right, right. That would be difficult, I would think, yeah. Yes. So yes. I, I don't know the gist of this question. Uh, so I, let's- uh, I can try to explain, because I'm teaching using Zoom. And what Zoom allows you to do is when you are deliver your lecture and then you can break the student into a discussion groups during the lecture, then students get two minutes or maybe five minutes. Oh, and I see. Five, five students in, so they can see each other in videos and then- I see. Like if you're the host of the- Okay, that's, a, that's good. Uh, I, 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 I did not know that, okay. So, so that's what good. you're yeah. saying, yeah, what is, you're, uh, you're saying is that you could switch back uh, to the live a, a large group, but you can also take the time out to subdivide into small groups with TAs. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, that's right. If okay. you have TA, you can also pre-assign the grouping and then you make sure TA, okay. each TA is managing, yeah. A but, but, uh, but, uh, but we need more TA, right? Not only uh, one. In my class, I have no TAs, so I, I just- oh, really? Uh, but you, so I can, as a host, though, I can go. I can, I can go into different discussion groups. So I check in one group for a minute, then I go to the other group, then I, you know, then uh, I, so I walk around. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I understand. Okay, the okay. Kind okay. of active learning when you have a small groups and the teacher or a coach will just that's uh, going around, around, right? Different, uh, different walk groups. Around that's right. Yeah, that, right. I think that's the question is about. I'm not Jen, but I, I, I think I understand what you mean. Okay, good, 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 good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's something worthwhile. Yes. Uh, yes. Well, oh, yeah. I am Jen. Sorry, if you want to be. I just oh, unmute myself. Yeah, I'm Queen. I, I teach in Queen's College. I'm an accounting professor. So Dr. Hu just become our president, the first Asian American president ever in a CUNY in a Queen's College. So you all know who Dr. Hu is, right? The former president of C100. Frank yeah. Hu? Right. So uh, Queen's College just kind of you know, switched to online learning a few weeks ago, all of a sudden, right? So we get trained from using uh, Blackboard and and Google me. So as a matter of fact, I recall your lecture is part of my lesson tonight because I teach in non-for-profit accounting. So I showed the students saying, okay, this is non-for-profit. This is one of the event organized by C100. So we're going to experience how they conduct their activity as yeah. um, financial key indicator. That's why I actually recording your lecture within my Google Meet meeting. But unfortunately, the class cannot hear you because I have my headphone on. So what I do is I'm accounting professor. Can you imagine? We are using a lot of formulas, demonstration, right? Talk about very complicated accounting concept for non-for-profit governmental. So I do not pre-record my video, but I do uh, let the student read the chapter. I post all my questions online. I have a discussion board so they could post their Q&A on discussion board. So I could demonstrate what I need to demonstrate using, you know, whiteboard, Excel spreadsheet, one note, right? And highlight the concept. And then I engage a student and switch to, I could see the screen and switch them to subgroup and engage at the same time. 
So all my homework quiz are online and how do I prevent them copy each other? A, I give them a very short time. So I would say, okay, my quiz already open from, you know, four to five, you already have 30 minutes, one attempt, you're done. Right? Okay, and second, I create a lot of uh, different questions. So every time they click, if I give them uh, two, two attempts, every time they click, the questions come from different order and different questions. So there's no way they could copy each other. And sir, we just, I'm the one to ask them to dance in, in the class before my oh, class. <laughs> <laughs> and free dancing is motivate you, including, you know, is really uh, have your good uh, spirit. And so I think they were happy and they trust, you know, they build the trust between faculty and students. I kind of using humor to lower the stress because uh, this is really a very yeah. difficult time for everybody, right? So yes, I think good. they would they would be happier that way. And that is a way I cannot, you know, really uh, upset her because, you know, we love her so much. So we have to be a good student. So that is another way to <laughs> motivate us. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. For your experience. yes thank, thank you for taking three out of my questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let time is up. So uh, maybe I will give uh, give you a, uh, a a couple minutes to uh, summarize some of the both your presentation and uh, your reactions to the to the Q and A's. Uh, how about just two minutes? Okay. Thank you, David. And also thank you all these uh, listeners. So I think this is, uh, uh, as I said, this is a very special period and it never happened in history. So uh, in China or in my university, what we did is uh, we just have a small groups of experts that uh, has a very good expertise, but still I think this is because this is so massive. So what we need is uh, everybody every professors and every students just use your own uh, efforts and you use your own mind so that we can collect all this experience together just like uh, Jen yeah. said before so then all these uh, experience can be very good for future education i think uh, as i said i don't hope that uh, this uh, very good uh, this uh, experience and this period after the after the epidemic they will all disappear. I think they will leave something for our education. And uh, I would like to say thank you again for all of you. Well, thank you. And, uh, and also thank everybody for coming. Uh, please uh, be reminded that we have a session tomorrow and then a session on, uh, on the mental health of young people and students. I think that uh, that's an interesting topic during this uh, virus uh, crisis. And then after that Monday, we have the principal of Fudan Affiliated High School uh, to talk about how to deliver online uh, uh, courses for high school kids. So you are certainly, all of you are welcome to sign up and uh, just like you, had, you did with this one. So with that, I like to conclude today's uh, uh, Samna. And uh, thank you again, Professor Xu. And I hope certainly you. uh, in some not too distant future, we get to meet uh, uh, in person. Yes, okay. Yes, yes in person. Thank okay. Thank Welcome. you. So, okay. so I hope everybody has the chance to visit Fudan at Shanghai. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Good night. Mm -hmm.